What is Docker? Docker is an open source software platform that enables developers to build, deploy, run, update, and manage containers. But what does all this mean? It means that you can download and host your own self-hosted applications, web servers, tools, you name it, you can download it and use it. But exactly what does this mean for you? Well, it means you can take a host, a world of different applications, put them into containers, which will demonstrate as little houses. And it just means that you don't have to go around finding the building blocks for these materials. You can literally run one or two commands. It'll download your file server, your blog, your self-hosted PDF editor with everything it needs to run straight out of the box. So instead of relying on all the services that you do currently, you could host your own cloud storage server. You could host your own PDF editors. You could even host your own version of Netflix and stream your movies and films, all legally obtained, by the way. And when you finish downloading everything and configuring it, you'll be able to access it on all your devices on your local networks, even your mobile phones, tablets, laptops, other computers, and even your friends will be able to access it if you implement those correct tools by following the videos on my channel. So without further ado, let's show you how you can download and install Docker for your own personal use. So without further ado, the first thing we're going to do is download and install Docker. So we're going to open the Edge browser here. We're going to search for Docker. And then all we've got to do is go to get started. You'll see download and you can select the option you want. We're going to be installing it on Windows today. So we're going to hit download for Windows. And while that's downloading, there is one important thing that we need to check. So if we right click the taskbar and we open task manager, if we go to performance, you will see we're looking at the CPU side of the task manager. You need to make sure that you have virtualization enabled. Now, most computers will have this on by default. However, you may need to go into your computer's BIOS, that's by restarting the computer and hitting the delete or F2 key a few times, and then find in those settings under CPU, virtualization. You must have that enabled to use Docker because it creates virtualized applications on your computer system, almost like mini PCs itself, nested within each other. So make sure you get that checked out first, and then we can proceed. Once you've done that, you can now open the Docker desktop installer and we can begin the process of installing Docker. Now this will take a few minutes. Now you do have a couple of options here. I'm using Windows 11 Professional and that means that Hypervisor is installed. Now although Docker recommends using WS2, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux, I prefer to use Hypervisor, so I'm going to uncheck this box. Now, if you're not running the professional version of Windows or the educational or enterprise versions and you just have the bog standard home, you're going to need to keep this checked because you do have access to WSL2 there, but you don't have access to that Hypervisor system without those additions of Windows I've mentioned. So if you do have the home version, check the box. If you don't, follow me and uncheck the box. And then we can proceed. So when Docker is installed, we can open the start menu and just search for Docker desktop. And here we get presented with a welcome to Docker desktop screen. We're just going to continue without signing in. We're going to skip this screen. Now don't be alarmed by the fact that over time, the more things that you install and download onto Docker, the longer the startup process may be while it initializes all your containers. But at this point, you can give yourself a pat on the back Congratulations, you have just installed Docker Desktop. You are going to need to enable some settings to get the best experience from Docker. The first thing you should do is go to the top bar and hit the cog settings. Welcome to the settings of Docker. You're going to want to hit start Docker Desktop with Windows if you're using it very regularly. And the other thing you can do is also set dark mode, which is a lot easier on the eyes if you like that type of thing. You might want to also go down to the bottom to make sure that you've got all the other options selected that you want and then just click apply and restart. 
Now, this sometimes trips people up because by default, it gives you very limited uh, resources, especially with your RAM. So if you have a, a, a processor like myself that has multiple cores in it, you don't want to give Docker access to all of that resource because you're going to want to save some for your host operating system, such as Windows. So we're going to bring this down and we'll give it eight of the 16 that it has detected. The other thing we're going to want to do is my computer has actually 32 gigs of RAM. We don't certainly want to give it all of that, but we certainly don't want to give it just two gigs of RAM because these containers that we're going to install are going to need a little bit more. So we're going to bump this up to, I say, a healthy eight gigs. That should be okay for what we need. Additionally, we can also increase the swap space to at least two gigs of RAM, and that gives us a good base. Now, you can also choose how much virtual hard drive space you want to give Docker. I personally find the 64 gigabit limit perfectly fine. And lastly, we'll leave the resource saver on. And all this does is that if you're not using anything, if your Docker containers are offline, it will reduce the amount of CPU and memory that it is using. When you're happy with that, just click apply and restart. And basically, the next step I would say would be to follow my dockage uh, self-hosted container video, which will show you how to install a really cool companion to Docker, uh, which will allow you to follow some of my other tutorials as well. So I've left the link in the description below. Feel free to go and watch that video now and get your first container installed into Docker. Thank you very much for watching.